Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to diagnose and repair your ABS system. For that I'm going to be using this Fragner Cascadia 2016 with an ABS system Meritor. ABS systems have different manufacturers like Bendix, Meritor and most modern trucks are using specifically ABS systems from their manufacturers like for Freightliners, they have Freightliners ABS systems, internationals, internationals ABS system. But the process on how to diagnose the ABS system is going to be similar. So this video is going to help you in case you have any issues with your ABS light. When the ABS light comes on, this can mean so many problems. So the way to repair it will vary. So don't expect then the process on how to fix the ABS light then I'm going to show you on this video is going to be similar to your truck or any other truck that you're working on. It's very important that you understand the ABS system, the way it works, but it is more important than you have a laptop or anything that is capable to diagnose the ABS system because there is no way to actually fix the ABS system without a computer. So now we have in this case the DDL software connected to it but you can use different softwares you can use you can use Meritor, Bendix or JPro can connect to the ABS systems as well so it will vary depending on the ABS system you have and the fault codes but let's get to this so we're gonna go to fault codes in this case and we're gonna have these codes right here we're gonna have ABS Axel 3 right and the ABS wheel sensor axle to left. As you can see these two right here, then I'm pointing. In the case of this Friday Cascadia that I'm working on, the ABS codes are also going to refer and call ABS problems to the CPC, in this case the controller. The way it works is then the CPC controls everything, engine, transmission, ABS, and all components that are around the, the truck. So if the ABS detects any problem, it will send it to the CPC, the CPC will send it to the transmission, the transmission will send it to the engine. That way it can control the movement, the speed, the torque, everything that is going on while you're driving your truck. But that is a different theory. So right now we are just going to focus on the problems, not on the theory on how it works. These codes are referring to wheel sensors. The wheel sensors are the ones that are in charge to measure the speed that each individual wheel is traveling to. So the speed on number three can be different to speed on number two and the left and the right can be different as well because you know the truck is not always in the same level, they're not the same, it's in the same straight line, it can go to the left, it can go to the right, so the speed, the wheel speed will vary. So now where are these wheel sensors located? That will be the question. So if you don't know where are the wheel sensors located, they are located on the axles. That one, the last axle, is axle number three. This one is axle number two. And the first one, the steer axle, is axle number one. Each axle will have two sensors. In this case, we have three axles, we're gonna have six sensors. But some ABS systems are going to have just sensors in two axles. So you're gonna have this, probably the rear one and the front one with sensors. But most modern trucks that are equip equipped with aromatic transmission like this truck it requires all sensors because the transmission needs feedback for all the wheels the way the wheels are operating if the transmission detects any problems with the wheel it will actually reduce the power or reduce the speed depending on the circumstance anyway here we have the problem in these two axles axle number two axle number three one thing very important is to check for the tire too. See this tire? It is not even, it is not really nice. So in some occasions, the tire thread can actually cause ABS sensors, ABS problems to actually come to your um, dashboard. So if your tires are completely bald, it's probably a reason why your ABS system is calling a fault. But if you don't have that issue, probably that's something else. That's the reason why you need the computer. But in this case, we are not getting any problems related to the speed or something. We're getting problems specifically to circuits, 
two electronic components that are not communicating each other it says and we have an open circuit that means then there is a circuit and it's not closing so somewhere it is open and it is not circling around back to the computer and the computer detects then there is an opening somewhere and that's the reason we have a hole. so in this case we have the left and the right left is going to be the driver side right is going to be passenger side remember that so we have second axle left sensor this one right here so in the case right here we have this sensor this belongs to the right sensor this is another problem i'm going to show you as you can see this is already fixed it has some connectors some butt connectors right here and the reason why because this one was completely cut the wires were completely separated from each other and that was the reason why this axle number two right was failing so this is another way to fix this problem if you see something like this then you can actually fix this issue by actually getting those two wires together but in this case axle number two left sensor is this one right here as i said before and here we have the connection for it this is the sensor this is the plug that is coming from the computer and this is the one that goes to the sensor to open this all you have to do is to pull it and then you have both connectors in some occasion you want to have corrosion in the pins and that will cause issues like this but in this case they're clean they, there is no evidence of corrosion or any type of material that is interfering in the communication between these two pins so that means then the problem goes beyond that so how are you gonna find out what kind of issue you have in this case we don't have a broken wire we don't see a broken wire like this one as i showed you before then it has a broken wire but it doesn't have a broken wire and it doesn't have any type of evidence and there is any type of corrosion or interference in communications or the pins um, interface uh, connections so for that you need different tools in this case i'm going to be using this basic tool this is a, a power tester very basic tool you can buy almost everywhere it costs around 100 dollars um, is very old tool so but it works perfectly for what we're gonna do you can use many different tools like multi testers you can use other tools that are very advanced for this but it is not necessary all you need is something to tell you the voltage and if it's able to communicate with ground for example we're gonna use this tool right here and we are gonna have ground you see that green mark right there that is because we have ground See? so that LED says that we have ground and if it turns red that means then we have positive but anyway this has a little screen that will actually tell us that a specific voltage that we're getting so the ignition is on always when you are going to do things like this be sure that the ignition stays on if the ignition is off this is not going to work so this right here, this is the male pin. This is the one that has the power and the signal that is coming from the computer, which means that this goes back to the computer. The female is the one that goes to the sensor. But it can vary depending on the manufacturer. Just remember that. If we connect one right here, you can see on the screen, and it says zero, zero. That means then that, that is the feedback, signal feedback. So the computer is going to use this to actually tell if the sensor is working correctly or to actually measure the speed of the sensor. Because we're using a, we're using a digital signal, that's the reason why we don't need ground. But then we go to the other one and you see we have 4.8. 4.8 is going to be the signal. So this pin is going to send the signal to the sensor it's going to go to the sensor and then come back to this pin with a specific signal that the computer wants to see to relay the speed of the sensor in this case we have voltage and we have the signal feedback which means 
then this wiring then goes all the way to the computer is fine we don't have any issues with it the issue is going to be somewhere else and what, it, what else this uh, problem can be the sensor so the sensor also when I have two pins a little harder to see it because it is right in there so a very easy way to know it is by measuring resistance you can grab a multi-tester and measure resistance and then you're gonna find out if the sensor is working or not but if you don't have a multi-tester and you have something similar to this you can use it too the way you're gonna use it is then you're gonna connect the ground which is this pin right here and you're gonna connect the sensor part of the multi-tester or the power probe uh, tester to the other pin of the sensor of of course right you have to actually play around see when i connect this one right here it is kind of hard so all right one here and the other one gotta be in there i don't know if i'm gonna be able to show you that uh let me see right here both pins are connected but you can see on the screen of this um, power pro this uh, voltage power uh, tester it doesn't say anything it doesn't have any feedback it doesn't have anything see it is blank so we're gonna use a different sensor in this case we have this other sensor then was fixed so we're gonna do the same so we're gonna insert one pin right here and the other one to the side and you can see we have signal now we have 0, 0.0 that means then this sensor is good that means then that sensor over there is no good why we getting 0, 0.0 it is because this sensor has a specific resistance so we need a specific voltage to actually get some power back so the more it works the more signal you're gonna get so in conclusion after going to the process of diagnosing this specific ABS problem on this truck we have a broken or a faulty ABS sensor on axle number two left axle number two also we have the same problem on axle number three which is that one over there in the corner the way to repair this problem will be to actually replace manually replace the sensors which means then for ABS systems in heavy duty trucks you have to remove the wheel the drums and then you can have access to the sensor to remove it you cannot replace the sensor without removing the wheels and the drums you actually have to do that once you you do that all you have to do is reconnect everything the way it was and everything is gonna work as it's supposed to be. but with this I'm going to finish this video on how to diagnose ABS systems this process is going to be similar to all ABS systems as I said before in this case as I say this is using a meritor system one ABS light can be in 1000 problems so as I said before too this specific problem that I'm showing you is not going to actually fix the problem that you have on your truck so be sure to have your software and your computer or a scan tool to actually pull the codes and read them and based on that you're gonna perform your repair so for that we are going to finish this video I guess it's enough information I'm going to post more videos about ABS systems that are very complex. These systems are extremely complex, especially ABS systems on trailers are even more complex than trucks. But with this, we finish the video. If you have any questions, just comment below. Go to Instagram, look for me, Francisco Maya YouTube, follow me there. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with anybody that has problems with ABS systems. And thank you for watching.